step on it, Jefferson. We're an hour late for our deliveries now. Oh, have a heart, Mr. Cupid. Look at that speed meter. What are you worrying about? About going to my own view. What did I tell you? Here come the cop. Now listen, you keep quiet. I'll get out of this. You wouldn't be in it if you would go where the flowers was going instead of stopping where they ain't going. What do you think this is, a racetrack? Uh, no, sir. What's your name and where's your driver's license? Uh, my name is Jefferson. Thomas H. Here's my license. Uh, may I see this, officer? Terrible. Absolutely terrible. What do you mean, terrible? Well, uh, your handwriting. My handwriting? Why? Oh, now you... wait, you don't understand. It, it's the way you cross your T. You see, very high in that, in that half open O and that. That little thing you put on the end of the W? Hey, what are you trying to pull? Oh, well, nothing, only you never should have been a cop in the first place. Who are you? Uh, according to your handwriting, you have what is known as, uh, well, great artistic ability. I have what? Artistic ability. You see, you should have been a, well, a, a writer or, or a painter or, or a, a singer even. No kidding. Yeah, a writer, huh? A singer? Or a painter? How do you know? Look, here's the book I'm studying. Graphology and six easy lessons. Why, I've been studying it so long, what? I can't... A man I've never seen before. You can? Yeah, wait a minute, I'll show you. Here, read that. To Susie. And please, John Henderson. Well, what about it? Well, when you see this Henderson, he mailed his order in. And he enclosed the cards to be sent to Miss Carey with the flowers every day. So I studied his handwriting and... Bingo. Right away, I knew she couldn't marry him. Why not? Well, well, look at that R. You see that, see that little thing right there? Mm -hmm. Well, it's just like a woman's. She's a... Oh, that's correct. Say, uh, can I borrow that book on graph, uh... Will you let me... Brush up, will you? Oh, sure. So long, boys. So long, officer. <laughs> Wait right here. There's a fire plug there. Suppose the police come along. But you always say, I'll only be a minute. Mm -hmm. Ain't that a shame? Oh, hello, Jimmy. Come on in. Thank you, Miss Carey. Oh, they're lovely, aren't they? Yeah, I guess so. What's the matter, Jimmy? Look, are you gonna marry this Henderson? Why, well, I, I don't know. Why do you ask? No, oh, I hate to tell you this. But you might as well know now as later. Oh, my goodness, this sounds serious. It is. You can't marry him. Why? Because I'm a graphologist and I've analyzed his handwriting and, well, he's a weakling. Are you sure? Absolutely. My analysis is never wrong. Why, Henderson's handwriting is, well, it's womanish. Look, let me explain it to you. Your handwriting is terrible. What's that? Why, you shouldn't have been a cop on account of the graft. Are you accusing me of taking graft? Uh, no, sir. I was just trying to tell you that you could make more money on other jobs. Another word out of you, and I'll drag you out of this car. Yes, sir. Oh, my goodness. Oh, me. You see, Miss Carey, it, it's all done by science. But, Jimmy, what I don't... Uh-uh. Don't you argue with me, because I like you. And I don't want to see a nice girl like you make a... make a serious mistake. Well, how do you do, Mr. Henderson? Oh, now, Jimmy... Uh-uh. I... Don't you try to kid me. That's your hand. Well, so is that. You're not going to give me away. <laughs> of course not. What I can't figure out is... What's a pretty girl like you doing sending flowers to yourself? Well, I got sick and tired of hearing my roommate crow about her boyfriend sending her flowers, so I... Oh, I... Yeah, it's all right, too. It doesn't matter now. Can't afford John Henderson anymore. 
lost my job. So I noticed. And I decided to take care of that. How? Well, I, I don't know myself yet, but don't you worry. You just keep your chin up and let O'Brien do the work. And say, I uh, might even fix it so I can get your boyfriend, too. Is this what you call going to the grocery store? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Ma. I just stopped for a minute to do some analyzing. I'm looking for a boyfriend for Susie. Is that so? Susie. And who in the name of all the saints is Susie? Oh, you don't know her, Ma. She's an awfully sweet girl. She's a good friend of mine. Well, I'm sorry for her. The last time you tried to play Cupid, three people went to the hospital. Yeah, but that wasn't my fault. The book said that... Well, now you get out of here and analyze this grocery list for a change. Yes, ma'am. Ma, this is terrible. What's terrible? Well, according to your handwriting, you should have been a murderer. A murderer? Well, I'll murder you if you dare talk like that to your mother. But it's not me, Ma. It's just what graphology says. Don't you see that? Oh, you, you, you! <laughs> you're, you're slipping, Ma. Your, your aim's not as good as it used to be. I think mine's better. Catch that. Now, you remember this. You let that Susie alone. Heaven help her if you try and get her a boyfriend by your analyzing. Thank you, sir. Hurry up with those flowers. We have a rush delivery this morning. And what is that you're hiding behind you? Oh, oh this? Uh, well, uh, it's just some odds and ends. Uh, stuff that we don't need. I, I was taking it to a friend of mine. Don't ever let me catch you taking flowers in this place again. Now take this to Miss Phyllis Benton. And remember, it's a rush order. And when I say rush, I mean rush. Yes, sir. And remember what I said about taking flowers. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Mr. Lester. Now that I know you don't want me to, it, it won't happen again, sir. Flowers from Miss Benton. Take that box right back where it came from. And you can tell him for me I don't want his flowers or him or anything connected with him. Yeah, but listen, I... Hey, Jefferson. Hmm? I got a boyfriend for Susie. Look, this Benton gal is through with her fella, and Susie needs a boyfriend. So now all I have to do is bring them together. But suppose Miss Susie don't like him. Well, she's got to like him. He's got a lot of money, and he's a good spender. And, he, well, he's a regular he-man. Yeah, and he's got brains, too. Gosh, I can hardly wait to introduce him. I bet. Come on, let's go, Jim. Oh, say, Mr. Lester, do you know where Bill Jones lives? The one that sends flowers to Phyllis Benton? No, he's the cash customer. But what do you want to know for? Well, uh, Miss Benton gave me a message for him. She did? What was the message? Well, she said that she didn't want his flowers, him, or anything he was connected with. So I thought if you knew where he lived, why, Jefferson and I could... But I don't. And besides, we don't give messages like that to our customers. Well, I know, Mr. Lester, you see, but... Get when... on with your next delivery, Jimmy. Yes, sir. And Jimmy. Yes, sir. Don't stop to do anything else but deliver flowers. Who, me? Oh, I wouldn't do that, Mr. Lester. Lester talking. Phyllis Benton wouldn't accept the flowers. 
She said she didn't want his flowers or him or anything connected with him. And that delivery boy wants very much to find Bill Jones. No, don't worry. I stopped him on that. Yes. Yeah. Where is he? Where is he? Where to? The man is going to fall in love with Miss Susie. Oh, uh, well, I don't know yet. But I do know one thing. His name is Bill Jones. That's a big help. Well, now, listen, don't you worry about it. Just leave it to me. I'll do the work. Uh -huh. But, Mr. Cupid, if you go through that book looking all through them Joneses, we're going to be late. And we're going to get another traffic ticket in. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? Don't you want to get a boyfriend for a nice girl like Susie? Yeah, and I want to keep a job for a nice boy like Jefferson. Oh, now, quit complaining. There's nothing to it. All we have to do is check up on these Joneses and see which one sent the flowers to Phyllis Benton. That's all. Is that all? That's enough. Say, what's the idea of accusing my husband of sending flowers to another woman? The shop didn't have anything to do with it. What? Hello? No, no, we don't know anything about it. We didn't send them. Sure it was your delivery boy. And now my wife is leaving me because she said I sent flowers to Phyllis Benton. No, sir. No, we don't know anything about it. We didn't send any flowers to anybody. Hello? Listen, that kid is still upsetting the whole town looking for Bill Jones. I'm going to fire him. What? Well, what do you want a nosy kid like him up there for? All right, you're the boss. But I still think we ought to get rid of him. And I'll send him right up. Okay. It's about time you got here. What's the matter, Mr. Lester? More rush orders? Yes, and besides that, what do you mean by telephoning all over town for Mr. Bill Jones? Well, well, I told you, sir. Miss Benton gave me a message for Haven't so I told you we don't deliver messages like that to our customers? Now get busy and deliver a boutonniere to Mr. Fred Morgan's apartment. Yes, sir. And remember, Mr. Morgan is one of our best customers. So don't stop to look for any more Bill Joneses. Say, Mr. Lester, we're getting an awful lot of rush orders lately. We could certainly use a girl around here to help us. A girl? Well, yes, sir. And, uh, well, she could pack flowers and it'd give Jefferson and I a lot more time for our deliveries. And I know just a girl. Her name is Susie Carey. Get She's going. Well, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Flowers for Mr. Morgan. Well, just a moment, please. Mr. Morgan wishes to see you. This is about an hour ago. What took you so long to get here? Well, I'm, I'm sorry, but I've been looking for you. Me? Yeah, I, I've been looking all over for you, but I didn't know you were you. Well, I'm afraid I don't quite know the score. What's all this about? <laughs> well, well, you see, Phyllis Benton gave me a message to deliver to you personally. And, gosh, I looked every place for you, but I didn't know you were Bill Jones until just now. Well, wait a minute. Uh, my name is Morgan. Fred Morgan. What on earth makes you think I'm Bill Jones? Oh, look, I I'm a graphologist. And the handwriting on Bill Jones's card is identical to that on your check. I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Jones. Uh... I mean, Mr. Morgan. Tell me. What's a clever kid like you doing delivering flowers? Oh, that, that's just a sideline. My real work is graphology. I see. I suppose you're wondering why I use the name Bill Jones. <laughs> well, yes, sir, I am. Young man? Would you like to serve your country? Serve my country? Oh, boy, would I? Well, sit down. I'll give you a chance. Yes, sir. You see, about three years ago... Mm. 
Yes, sir. Fred Morgan in? Who shall I say is calling? Wait a minute, pal. I don't want to see him. I just want to know something. Well, I'm very sorry, sir, but... Now, now, I uh, don't want to know much. I'd just like to know what time Mr. Morgan left his apartment, sir. Yeah, he hasn't been out. Are you sure of that? Yes, sir. He hasn't been out. Well, okay. Got a match? Ooh, yes. Hey. Keeping you pretty busy? Well, we just make another social call. Hmm. Had a lot of deliveries today? Yes, sir, and a lot that wasn't delivered. Hey, you didn't by any chance deliver some flowers to a Miss Benton, Phyllis Benton? Phyllis Benton? Oh, yes, sir, we delivered them flowers this morning. You know who sent them? Uh, some uh, Bill Jones. Uh, Mr. Cupid is running all over town looking for him now. Cupid? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, that's a name that we call Jimmy, the delivery boy. Uh -huh. uh, what do you want to know so much about uh, Miss Benton? I'm a reporter. Uh, is she one of them celebrities? No. Well, that is, she wasn't until a few hours ago. Oh. Have a look at that. Yes, sir, she's a pretty lady. What's the matter, can't you read? Uh, I can read reading, but I can't read writing. Oh, I see. Well, listen to this. Pretty Miss Phyllis Benton was today the victim of a ruthless killer mm. who took her life under mysterious circumstances. Dressed in street clothes with packed bags as though leaving soon on a trip, the body of the girl was left in her apartment by the killer. Good gracious of me. Police authorities are carefully checking every available killer's identity. Mm -hmm. You're a G-man. Gee, that's wonderful, Mr. Morgan. And, and you're really gonna let me be your assistant? Yes, Jimmy. Gosh. Providing you'll do exactly as I tell you to do. Oh, don't worry. I will, Mr. Morgan. You can depend on me. Now, the first thing I want you to remember is that you're not to tell to anybody. Not even to the police or, or reporters or anyone. Not even the police? No. You see, Jimmy, running down spies is very dangerous work. You can't trust anyone. You never know who might be a spy. They're all over the place. Is, is Miss Phyllis Benton one? Yes, I'm afraid she is. That's why I didn't use my real name. I use lots of different names. Oh, oh, I get you. Now, I want you to keep in close touch with me. And if anybody, anybody at all, ask... Uh -huh, all right. Well, it certainly is an honor to work with you, Mr. Morgan. Thanks. Better run along now, Jimmy. Okay. Uh, say, I don't like to mention this, but just between you and I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of qualified for this job. I used to be a Boy Scout. That's fine. Well, so long. What did you mean about Cupid looking for this Bill Jones? What does he want with him? I don't know no more, mister. You better ask Mr. Cupid. Here he come now. Oh, hello, Cupid. Call yourself. Your friend here tells me you delivered some flowers today to Miss Phyllis Benton. That's right. What if I did? Well, he says that a Bill Jones sent those flowers and that you're looking for him, and I'd like to know why. You talk too much. Why are you asking me all these questions? Well, I'm a reporter, and I'd like to get a line on Miss Phyllis Benton. Well, you're a reporter. Why don't you look her up? Well, I did. You don't need me, then. She was murdered this afternoon. What? Who did it? That's what I'd like to know. Now, do you want to tell me what you want with Bill Jones? Well, no, I'm afraid that's still my business. I see. Let me give you some advice, Cupid. People who know anything about a murder and try to keep it to themselves sometimes get into trouble. Well, uh, thanks very much for nothing. I think I can manage to take care of myself. Okay. Where are we going now? Shh, sit tight. We gotta get rid of that snoop. I gotta go back up and talk to Mr. Morgan. Now look, if he comes back and asks you any questions, you don't know anything. Absolutely nothing, understand? You don't know nothing about what? About anything. About Mr. Morgan, uh, Bill Jones, Phyllis Benton, or anything. Yeah, but he said if we don't tell what we know, we will have to get in trouble. Yes, but if you do tell, you'll be a traitor to your country. Oh, Mr. Cupid, how could I be a traitor to my country? Why, my grandpappy cooked for the United States Army. Oh, now, look, try to get this into that thick skull of yours. Mr. Morgan is a G-man. G-man? Yes, and I'm a government agent now, too. You is? Yes, and, and so are you, I guess. That is, by proxy. Uh, can us wear a badge? No, no, we can't wear a badge. We're secret, secret service men. Oh, 
You got to keep it a secret. That's it. Now you got it. Now look, you wait right here for me. Can I speak to Mr. Morgan again, please? Sure, Jimmy. What is it this time? Hey, Chief, look. Somebody just murdered Miss Denton. No. He's asking me a lot of questions. Says he's a reporter. What did you tell him? Nothing, Chief. Absolutely nothing. That's fine. Who do you think would do a terrible thing like that? I don't know. One of her spies, I suppose. Probably thought it would be safer to get rid of her. Gee, spies don't... Are you in your right mind? I think so. Why take a chance like that, going to that crazy kid's house? That's just why I'm going to take chances. I don't get it. Maybe he isn't just a crazy kid. Maybe he has a brother or a father at home who put him up to all this. That's just what I was thinking. So what did you tell him all that bunk for? Because it's the surest way to keep his mouth closed. He's the only one that has me connected with Phyllis Benton. I know a better way to close his mouth. That kid's going to be very valuable to us. He'll watch every move Callahan makes. He'll notice anyone snooping around the shop. And he'll fly straight to me with the information. I still don't think My it's... dear Phillips, you never think. He'll be helping us night and day. And the sweet part of it is, a kid like that will never be suspected. Oh, but Jimmy, I'm afraid to barge in on your mother like this. Don't worry, mother's the sweetest thing in the world. Come on. Sit down. Ma! Hey, Ma! Say, what do you mean by coming home at this hour? And your are off, Mama. Uh, this is Susie. Miss Susie Carey, my mother. How do you do? She's gonna stay with us tonight. Oh, she is. Yeah, and look, I want you to say that she's your niece from California. Mr. Morgan's coming over to see me on business, and I want him to meet Susie here. And you say that she's a relative of yours, so it won't look phony to Mr. Morgan to find Susie here. No, I don't see. Oh, I'm awfully sorry, Mrs. O'Brien. I know I shouldn't have come here, but Jimmy and Susie... Well, that's all right, Miss Carey. I know it's no fault of yours. It's this bright son of mine. Do you mind waiting in the kitchen a few minutes till I get down to the bottom of this? Certainly, O'Brien. Jimmy O'Brien, now you listen to me. In the first place, you're laner. Well, in the second place, I've told you time and time again to stop trying to play Cupid. But in the third place, you can't use my house for a lonesome club. I'm not... And in the fourth place, I'll tell no lies about Miss Carey being my niece from California. Oh, Mom, please, it, it's not exactly a lie. We're, we're just pretending. Please, say she's your niece. I'll do nothing of the kind. There's Mr. Morgan now. Hey, Susie, Susie, come on out, he's here. Don't forget, Ma, please. She's your niece from California, huh? I will not say she's my niece from California or any other state. Oh, hi, Chief. Any new developments? Nothing new, Jimmy. Uh, come in, Mr. Morgan. Mother, I'd like to have you meet Mr. Morgan. How do you do, Mr. Morgan? It's a pleasure, Mrs. O'Brien. And this is my darling little niece who's just arrived from California, Miss Susie Carey. How do you do, Miss Carey? Uh, how do you do, Mr. Morgan? Let me take your coat, darling. Uh, Mr. Morgan, hmm. this is my graphology file. Uh, you and Susie can sit over there together and look at it, huh? <laughs> Go ahead. Sit down. Well, I, I'm hungry now, Mom. I think I can eat supper. Come on. You'll excuse us, won't you, please? Yeah. Aren't you ashamed of yourself, putting poor Miss Carey in such an awkward position? But, Ma, according to... Don't you say graphology to me again! Shh! Well, they'll hear you. gone wrong. They're not saying anything. You think maybe I better... Mind your own business. Yeah, but I picked him for Susie's boyfriend. I gotta do something.
excuse me for busting in like this, but I just had an idea. Mr. Lester says you're one of our best customers. Is that... Uh, yes. Well, Susie's going to be looking for a job, and well, we could certainly use a girl at the shop with all these rush orders and everything, so I thought well, maybe... Why don't you speak to Mr. Lester? <laughs> well, I, I did, but uh, Mr. Lester and I aren't getting along so well right at the uh. present. Oh, excuse me, will you? Uh, I think that's for me. I left this number at my apartment in case anyone tried to reach me. Oh, well, come on, I'll show you where the phone is. Thank you. Right there on the table. Why don't you do something? I can't do everything. Well, what can I do? I don't know. Yes, this is Mr. Morgan. Olga was unavoidably detained. Oh, that's too bad. What shall I do with her corsage? Well, don't worry. I'll take care of everything. But she'd be a cinch to get the job. Why, I'd be very glad to do that. Uh, I should think you would be a charming asset to the shop. Oh, thank you, Mr. Morgan. Gee, that's awful nice of you. No, not at all. And by the way, Miss Carey, I have uh, two tickets to the midnight showing of the Golden Slipper. I was to have taken my mother tonight, slightly indisposed. Am I presuming too much in asking you to go with me? Oh. I don't think I could. Oh, I... yes, you could, Susie. Sure, she'd love to go. Oh, but I'm not dressed. Well, uh, I wouldn't give you time to change clothes and then come back, couldn't Why, you, Mr. Morgan? Why, certainly. I'll call back for you uh, in an hour. And I know a delightful place about 15 miles in the country where we could have dinner. Oh, oh, oh Susie, it'd, it'd be crazy about that. She's always like those out-of-the-way places. Well, I'm settled you? then, is it? I'll call back for you in an hour. All right. Boy, everything's going great, isn't it? Oh, it is, is it? Say, how many more times have I got to tell you to stop playing Cupid? Here you've got this girl going someplace she doesn't want to go, with a man she doesn't even know, doing something she doesn't want to do. Oh, but Mom, don't understand. He's perfect for Susie. Graphology says so. Say, Jimmy O'Brien, if you as much as mention that word in this house again, uh, I'll... Uh, 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 uh. You know, Mom, that's what I've always liked about you. You're so tough. Come on, we'll get your hat and coat. Oh. That's lovely. I hope you're right. We're taking an awful chance with this. What else can we do now that Olga's in a jam? I don't like those people. Besides, I don't think she'll question wearing a beautiful corsage. But suppose... I'll do the supposing. Furthermore, I want you to give her a job in the shop tomorrow. Give her a job here? Yes, here. She's going to work out excellently. Thank you. Another minute, I'd have been eating my corsage. I'd love to work there. Floral displays are so lovely, and well, this one's quite unique. Don't you think so? Like it? As a matter of fact, it's so beautiful, I noticed several people admiring it. This is all hearsay, Callahan. Conjecture and surmise. Not a word we can print. I'm positive the explosion last night was the work of that game. You haven't a shred of proof. I'm going to get the proof. I'm working on a new line. Okay, Callahan. I hope... $300,000 damage. Not bad, huh? Better wait until we succeed in our biggest undertaking, the Barry Aircraft Company, before you indulge in congratulations. I wonder what's keeping Retzloff. As I told you, Chief, you should have left that assignment to me instead of him. Are you making a suggestion as to how I should run things? No. No, not at all. Uh, boy, this new graphology book is sure a beaut. It's got 182 pages in it. Yeah, and I got 182 boxes. Hey, I read this book from cover to cover, and I still don't know where I'm at. Oh, hiya, Cassidy. Well, listen, I just got my new one, and as soon as I finish it, I'll let you read it. Oh, fine. 
Will you please stop bothering me? There's that lug again. Who, Pat Callahan? Yeah, you know him? Sure, he's a pal of mine. You're not very particular about your pals, are you? Hey, is he really a reporter? One of the best in the business. And he certainly makes a hit with the girls, too. Oh, he does, does he? We well, ain't gonna make a hit with Susie. I'll break that up. Jimmy? Uh, yes, sir. Get a move on with those deliveries. Right away, sir. Come on, Jefferson. Wait a minute. All right, let's go. Mr. Cupid, what is we waiting for? Mr. Lester told us to hurry. Here's what I'm waiting for. Hey, Callahan, come here. Look, I want to give you a little friendly tip. You stay away from Susie. Stay out of that shop and keep it wonderful. No, honest, I'm on the level. I don't want to see you get into trouble. The following's pretty tough, you know, and if you're not careful, you're going to get that nice kid Susie into an awful jam. I will? Well, thanks a million, Callahan. I will still take care of Susie. Okay, youngster, have it your own way, but don't say I didn't tell you. Uh, I got an important call to make. Oh, me. Pat Phillips. Hello? It's that kid again. Hello, Jimmy. What's on your mind? Listen, that Callahan guy keeps hanging around the shop. He's trying to get in good with Susie. Yeah, yeah, all right. I'll keep in touch with you, Chief, and I'll let you know anything he does. Right, bye-bye. Bye, Jimmy. I hope you have all the details correct, Retzloff. No, I have done a perfect job. Good. Uh, Kurt might have missed a detail or two, but not me, Chief. Quiet. Let's see the map. Now, the uh, very aircraft private dining room is here. Uh -huh. That is where all the big uh, lip bombs are to have their anniversary luncheon tomorrow yes, at 12.30. I know all that. Let's hear the rest of the plan. Adjoining the dining room is where all the new precision instruments are kept. Uh -huh. The bomb aiming device, everything. It's a perfect setup. Why? Why? Because against this wall, is another table. Huh? That is where the big floral piece with the bomb will go. Oh, excellent. See that Lester arranges that piece tonight. I hope my assistant G-man doesn't drop it on the way. <laughs> Gosh, this is terrible. Gee, the open W's as well as the loop J's have a bearing on the high cross T's. Good gracious, Mr. Cuban, what's the matter with you? Well, volume two changes everything. What's so terrible about that? What's so terrible about it? Nothing, only we have to recheck all of our analysis. We do. Oh, boy, do we? We got a lot of work to do tonight. Well, I'm too wet. I'm going home. Going home? That's what you think. I'll say, Jefferson, hurry up to the sweep, will you? I want you to help me with my analyzing. Boy, look at this. Another corsage for Mr. Morgan for Susie. Boy, that's sure a beaut. I guess he's taking her out again tonight. He's sure fallen for her. Miss Susie's a lucky girl to have flowers from two boyfriends in one day. Two boyfriends? Now listen, Jefferson, I told you. Callahan is not her boyfriend. He's just... Get a move on now. I want all these flowers put away tonight. I I'll take that to Miss Carey. And don't forget to be here an hour earlier in the morning. We have a big order to prepare for the Berry Aircraft Luncheon. Yes, sir. Mr. Morgan's compliments, Miss Carey. Thank you. Oh, they're lovely. You may lock up now. All right, Mr. Lester. Oh, hi, Susie. Where's Mr. Morgan taking you tonight? Oh, same place, I guess, the tavern. Boy, but... isn't everything going great? Yes, there certainly is a job. Oh, I, I don't mean the job. You know what I mean. I mean, uh, your boyfriend. Oh, and... uh, which boyfriend? Uh, what did I tell you, Mr. Keith? Shut up. Now, now, listen. Morgan is the only fellow for you. This Callahan, he's out, Susie. Strictly out, see? Maybe. Well, good night, Jimmy. See you in the morning. Well, what do you mean, maybe? Oh, uh, by the way, Professor, since you're running my romances, why don't you analyze Mr. Callahan's handwriting? Callahan? Well, well, what for? Well, he might turn out better than John Henderson. <laughs> Be quiet.
No wonder Ma got sore. Her writing's swell. She'd like what these lessons say. Uh-huh. High cross T. Sloping Y. This is awful. It, it's terrible. Hey, hey, Jefferson. Hey, hey. Uh, what's the matter? I made a mistake. Uh, which one? Well, according to this, Morgan isn't a G-man. How can you tell? Well, well, this claims he's a liar. Now how does that prove he ain't no G-man? Oh, you stoop. How could a liar be a G-man? Yeah, and that's not all. Volume 2 says that, that he's crooked. He's, he's treacherous. And, well, well, a guy is just a complete phony. Uh, you mean that Mr. Morgan ain't no good? No good? Well, he's a rattlesnake. Susie! She's probably dancing with that big gorilla right now. H Hello. Hello, is this the tavern? I'd like to speak to Miss Susie Carey. Yeah, she's in the dining room. Carey, yeah, that's right. C-A-R-E-Y. Uh, Mr. Cuban, uh, don't you think that you're hurrying a little too fast? What do you mean, too fast? I have to save Susie. Uh, maybe you better wait until you read volume three. Oh, sh... Hello. Hello, Susie. This is Jimmy. Now, listen closely. Oh, hello, Jimmy. What? Why, I can't do that. But you've got to. I don't know, but you find some way to get rid of Morgan. Yeah, go... Hey, that's ridiculous. What's the matter with Mr. Morgan all of a sudden? Has something gone wrong with his T's or are his W's acting up? No, no, it's not that. It, it's his Q's and his O's. Now, please, do what I tell you. No, and I think a good night's sleep would do you a lot of good, Professor. Bye-bye. Oh, isn't that just like a woman? What are we going to do now? No, I don't know, Jefferson. But i got to find somebody to get her away from Morgan. Yeah, and I have to find her a new boyfriend. Oh, my goodness. Is we got to go all through a telephone book again? No, 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 no. Now, shut up. Let me think. I got it. Callahan. Come on, Jefferson. Here we go again. Come on. Oh, Mr. Cupid, what is we going to eat? How can you think of eating when you're serving your country? But, Mr. Cupid, I'm empty. Oh, come on. Absolutely, Jefferson. Morgan says he's a G-man running down spies. But graphology says he isn't. So... So what? Uh, so he's a spy. Why, his open W is that. They do? Sure. Hey, Callahan. Oh, hello, Cuban. Who sent you down here? Never mind the smart cracks. Something important has happened. Yeah? Yeah, I've, I've decided maybe I was wrong about you. So what? Well, so how do you spell your name? My name's C-A-L-L-A-H-A-N. Why? Mm -hmm. Look, would you mind writing it for me? Writing it? Yeah. What's the gag? Well, if this proves you're all right, you're going to get Susie. Hey, are you crazy? Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm a graphologist. Now, now, be quiet a minute, will you? Uh-oh, uh, mister, uh, give me a bottle of soda water, please. Well, Callahan, I guess I owe you an apology. According to volume two, you're all right. Thanks. Now, look, I've decided that Morgan is not the guy for Susie. Now, look, here's what I want you to do. You get in your car and go out to the tavern. The tavern? Yeah, sure, Susie's out there with Morgan. Now, go on, hurry up. Now, wait a minute. There's some things you and I got to talk about first, and we better get out of sight. Come here. That kid doesn't know you. Amble into the pool room and find out what he's up to. Very well. So, so Morgan owns the shop, huh? Can't figure out how he fooled me. If Mr. Morgan owns this shop, we better quit that investigation. Why? Because we're going to investigate ourselves right out of jail. Oh, shh, quiet. You sure this is Morgan's handwriting? Absolutely. He even admitted it himself. You mind if I take this down to headquarters? No, you can have it, Callahan. Hey, you mean we can arrest Morgan now? No, no, not yet. We know a lot of things about him, but we can't prove any of it. For instance, we're sure he had Phyllis Benton murdered. Well, why would he want to have her murdered? Because she found out what he was using her for, a signal carrier. You got to hand it to him. He's plenty smart, using flowers for messages. Flowers? Yeah. What do you mean? Telegrams can be decoded, telephone lines tapped, but who's going to decode a bunch of flowers? 
Oh, I get it. You mean like roses would mean one thing and violet something else? But smarter than that. It's the arrangement, the color combination, and where they're worn. A girl wearing a corsage could mean anything from arson to murder. Say, that's pretty... Oh, my gosh! Susie's wearing one of those! Now, look. Susie needs us both, so don't you do anything without first consulting me, see? All right, I won't. Come on. What's the matter? One of Morgan's men. You sure? Sure. I haven't been following that gang for two months for nothing. Oh, my goodness. What are we going to do now? Shh, wait a minute. Let me think. I got it. We'll put up a phony argument. You take your cue from me, Callahan. Right. Hey, you, wait a minute. I don't believe you're just a reporter. And you remember what I told you. You stay away from Susie. Why, you little pest out of... Yeah? Who are you going to get to help you? And remember, stay out of that flower shop. And you keep away from Susie. Stay away from yourself unless you're not particular about the company you keep. Come on. Listen, you. I'll grab a cab and get to the tavern. Any time I want to see Susie, I'll see her. Yeah, that's what you'll think. Come on, Jefferson, let's go. Where to now? So we're going back to the shop. I think I just had a brainstorm. Uh, Mr. Callahan told us not to do anything because... Never mind what Callahan said. We're going back to that shop and search all the files. We may get enough evidence to arrest Morgan tonight. Oh, well, he's probably taking Morgan's baloney seriously. Just the same, I'm going to keep my eye on him a little longer. I don't think we ought to go back to that shop. How you know that man back there at that pool room ain't following us? Well, we'll drive around the block and make sure he isn't. Pretty smart, huh? Ain't no use you asking my opinion. You wouldn't listen no harm. Hello. Lester? Listen. I'm about three blocks away. It looks like the kid's headed for the shop. Turn out the lights and wait. I'll come around the back way and meet you there. I think he's up to something. Uh, Mr. Cuban. Uh, Mr. Callahan told us not to do anything unless we tell him. And I think he's an awful smart man. Yeah, well, he wasn't smart enough to think of what I'm gonna do. Jefferson, get that record book. We're going through everything in the place. Boy, I'd give anything to see Morgan's face when he finds out I'm trailing him instead of Callahan. Uh, Mr. Cupid, is you sure that you ain't gonna change your mind again? Absolutely. Morgan's one spy that's gonna be trapped by nothing but plain graphology. And with Callahan assisting me, I wouldn't be surprised if we rounded up the whole bunch of those dirty rats. But uh, Mr. Cupid, there's one thing about spies I can't understand. Yeah, what's that? Why do they have to investigate them so much? Why don't they take them out and shoot them? Because you've got to have foolproof evidence. Oh. And that's what we're getting right here. I see. Boy, this is great. Even if we're not real G-men, we're still serving our country. I can hardly wait for them to grab the whole bunch of them. This will probably be the biggest roundup of spies in the United States. I'm certainly going to make it plain to those newspapers what this country owes to graphology because... Is that you, Jefferson? It can't be. I'm afraid you're going to have to postpone that interview with the press. Reach. You too. Mm, mm, mm. All right, out that way. Here's the tavern. I'd like to talk to the cigarette girl in the dining room. Yes, Mr. Morgan, I certainly do like working at the shop. I hope Mr. Lester's pleased. Yes, I happen to know he is. Uh, as a matter of fact, he told me so himself. Cigarettes? Thank you, no. Well, I'm awfully sorry, Miss Carey. I nearly forgot an important phone call I have to make. Will you excuse me? Oh, certainly. Uh, I'll be right back. What's up? Oh, 
Okay. You know where to take them. And send somebody to find the other one. Right. I knew you'd be missing me, so here I am. Wait a minute. Yes. Hello? The other one just arrived. Yeah. He's here now. All right. Breslov, Kurt, you've got to grab Callahan at the tavern. But you can't use the boss's car, it's too well known, so I'll drive you down to the garage where you pick up another car. Hey, wait a minute. Callahan doesn't know a thing about this, not a thing. Now leave him out of this, will you? Shut up. Yes, but you... Uh, did you hear the man say shut up? All right, boys. In the car. For all the Callahans as crazy as you are. Yeah, it kind of runs in the family. You see, my grandfather one time... Oh, Mr. Morgan, Mr. Callahan. How do you do, sir? How do you do? You mind if I barge in long enough to have a drink? May I? Oh, certainly. Mr. Morgan doesn't mind. No, I don't mind. Well, fine. Waiter, what'll it be? Oh, I have one, thank you. Oh, well, let's have two good American highballs. I never cared much for those fancy foreign drinks. There's a motorcycle cop following us. I think we're gonna get a traffic ticket. <laughs> I hope. Hold on with the curb. I'll handle this. One funny move, it'll be the one of you. I'll let you have it, cop or no cop. Hey, Jimmy. Oh, hello, Mr. Lester. I didn't see you. It's all my fault, officer. I told him to hurry. A rush order, you know. Well, that's all right. You weren't speeding. I just wanted to talk to Jimmy about a book. Oh, the book? Well, well Callahan's got that. He's at the tavern. Callahan? Well, I'm afraid we'll have to be getting along. Good night. Good night, Mr. Lester. Good night, Jimmy. Good night, Lester. Callahan? Book? Tavern? You see, it runs in the family. I come by my love of flowers quite naturally. Oh, wasn't that a sweet story? Oh, that's one of the sweetest stories I've ever heard. Look, may I have this dance with you and then I'll barge out of the party? Wait a minute. Uh, let's all have another drink. No, no, thanks. I never take more than one. Oh, no? No. Excuse me. Certainly. time and what I'm gonna say won't make sense, but you gotta listen, it's important. My goodness, you sound serious. I am serious. I got a message for you from Jimmy. He wants you to make some excuse to Morgan and get out of here. Oh, I get it. You're the one that had Jimmy phone me about all that open wine, crooked W stuff about Morgan. No, no, I didn't. Imagine one of the mighty Callahans having to depend on a kid to play Cupid for him. Oh, now look, Susie, you gotta listen to me. It's about Morgan. I beg your pardon, Mr. Callahan. You want it on the phone? I can't be bothered. But, sir, it's your paper. It Oh, okay, okay. Look, I'll take you back to your table, and, and then I'll be right back. And you be ready to leave with me. Come on. Hello? 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 You are going with us. Callahan! Don't answer. Get in that car.
Doesn't look as though Mr. Callahan is coming back, does it? No, and I, I can't understand it. Come on, step on it. Someone is trailing us. I think it is a cop. I'll speed her up. Shake him off. Callahan, out you go. He's in pretty bad shape. Better send the ambulance quick. Uh, the license number is 161285. But it's sure to be a phony. That's all. It's held rigidly in place by this wire frame. <laughs> Looks beautiful, doesn't it? A nice floral piece. <laughs> and it's time for 12.30? Yes. As long as we're unable to get these bomb sites, no other country's going to have them. Remember, there must be no slip-up. I don't know how much Callahan told the girl. Have you been able to get anything out of Jimmy? No, he still insists she knows nothing. Mm. Well, bring him in. I'll settle this. Are we uh, going to dispose of them now? No, we can't afford to have two employees of the shop found uh, liquidated until our work is done and we're safely on our way. Listen here, Morgan. Susie doesn't know a thing about this. She don't know nothing, I don't know nothing, and Mr. Cupid don't know nothing. And if he did, we wouldn't be here. Shut up. Pick up. Tell her you're going to be out of town tonight. Then get the girl on the phone. I'm going to find out how much she knows. Quit stalling. Whitmore, 9371. Uh, hello, Mom. Oh, hello, Susie. Uh, listen, will you tell Mom I won't be home tonight? Yeah, I'm going out of town. All right, I'll tell her. Say, Jimmy, from what Pat Callahan said tonight, you were right about my not going out with Mr. Morgan anymore. I'll tell you all about it in the morning. Goodbye. Say good night. Well, good night, Susie. Well, I guess that settles that. Morgan, without a doubt, you're just plain rough. <laughs> what are you all that to Mr. Cupid for? He didn't mean no harm. Huh? Tell the carry girl to take the floral piece to the very airport. And give her a lot of extra flowers, enough to keep her there until uh, 1230. Could I talk to Mr. Callahan? Pat. Pat. It's me. Cassidy. Oh, hello, Cassidy. How you feeling, Callahan? Oh, pretty good. Hey. Bend down a little. I can't hear you. Get that nurse out of here. We're going places. He says he'd like to have a cup of tea. Get my pants. Oh, now, wait a minute, Pat. You're a sick man. Shut up and get my pants. Oh, gee, Pat. Mm -hmm. Now, you see what I mean is, you can always tell a man's character by his handwriting. For instance, your signature shows that... Ah, uh, nonsense. I don't believe it. Put it away. Evidently, you haven't studied graphology. I still don't believe in it. Suppose a man had palsy. Oh, well, well, that wouldn't matter, because graphology would show you that. Yes, and his character, too. Now, now, for instance, your signature shows that you like intrigue and adventure. How? Well, just by the way he crosses the T and has a little... It's very hard to see. Look, see right there? All right, put him up. Get his gun, Jefferson. Did you let him say, give me the gun? Get over there. Come on. Hey, give me the keys to that van. Jefferson, open that door. All right, you two. Get in there. Come on. Come on, Jefferson. Let's get out of here. Oh, me? Oh, my.
reports and everything. Quick, we've got to go down to the Barry Aircraft Company right away. Are you crazy? No, Kirk just phoned. The kid got away. We've got to hit him off. Come on. It's our only chance. I'll make Morgan tell me where Susie and that kid are if I have to kill him. Hey, look. There's Morgan's car leaving right now. Follow that car. All right, step on it. Get going. in the dining room. They planted a bomb up there. The spies did it. Susie's up there, too. Get out of here. What you kids don't think of to get into an airplane factory. No, honest, this is on the level. No, no, Please, let no. me in. Nobody go through. Uh-oh. He won't let me in. Gotta do something. I got it. station to have him pick up Crystal. Jefferson, where are you? Are you all right? Oh. 